9 y 3. Let's start. Ok. Good morning, everyone. Let's start with the CCAM session here today in ITI 118. Should I change? No. No, no. that one. Ok. Ok. Uh, oh, give me just one second. Just to work. Okay. Yes, uh, um, first they're not well, so uh, at this time, in, in, in this point of the week, probably you are already familiar with all the, the not well details, but uh, yeah, basically the, the point here is to follow the ITF rules, so be aware of the, all the processes and policies of ITF in terms of patent disclosure, in terms of privacy of the personal information, and also the, the, the way of running the meetings, so that is respectful a way of, of uh, working with our colleagues. No. Okay. <laughs> so just emphasizing that, that point of the conduct guidelines, so we need to, to, to participate with respect and courtesy and having personal discussions. So this is a technical forum. So let's, let's behave in a respectful way, that respect. Oh. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, to, to remind that the session is being recorded, uh, make sure to sign in the uh, in the session using the Miteco, the, the tool, or scanning the QR code that you can see there in in, in the pro, uh, the projection. So yeah, and that, just for having the full recording of the of the participants. For those that are participating remotely, please make sure that your audio and video is off, unless you you have to to talk. Oh, okay. Um, this is the, the new Miteco look and feel. So um, I guess that, again, at this point of, uh, of the week, you already uh, have <laughs> tried several times the, the Miteco, but be, be sure about the new uh, buttons and the new ways of uh, participating. So, uh, yeah. Okay. From the administrative point of view, um, you can see on, on the screen the link for the minutes. So anyone that could volunteer and take minutes is more than welcome. For the blue sheets, again, uh, scan the QR code or, or just simply ac access the, the Miteco tool. So this, uh, this will record the participants. Reminder about the IPR process. Um, there is a, a procedure for polling drafts, authors, and contributors once the, the drafts are progressing in the working group. But in any point of time, if any of you is aware of IPR, please disclose that and, and make it public. Details of the session is um, right now, for sure. We have two hours behind, uh, on front of us, and the details of the are in the link. Uh, you can access in the ITF agenda. And as you can see, the agenda is very packed for today. We have uh, a full uh, set of uh, presentations, interesting presentations together with what happened in the side meeting yesterday. So yeah, very, very interesting session. Just as a reminder, uh, in the working group for dynamize uh, or make the dynamic conversations and, and dynamizing, let's say, the progress of the, of the group, please use the, utilize the mailing list uh, as much as, as, as possible. Uh, it's, it's the way of disseminating the, the discussions and, and getting contributions from other people involved, other people in the discussions. We are fortunate of having as well very regular or a number of interesting number of, of weekly meetings, so that the group is working well in, in that respect. But any, I mean, emphasizing the usage of, of the mailing list makes uh, the, the participation broader. Again, some notes about the IPR process. So the, 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 there is a procedure of polling draft authors and contributors prior, prior to moving the draft progressing in the working group process. And again, insisting on, on disclosing the PR as, as soon as you are aware of that. And then I hand over Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. So uh, an update on the status of the working group. Uh, we have uh, three drafts uh, in the ISG processing. Uh, if I correctly remember, uh, Daniel uh, accepted to help uh, John uh, with the L1 CSM. So he will be the uh, the, uh, the AD uh, taking care uh, taking care of the draft. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, working group documents uh, being discussed uh, today. This is uh, this is really good. We will uh, we will go through them uh, uh, during uh, during the session. Now a quick uh, uh, overview uh, on the ones that uh, um, will not uh, will not be presented today. Uh, 
Uh, we have the Ethernet client uh, the topology. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, requires uh, um, a, li a little bit, uh, a little bit of work. Uh, the network inventory is uh, uh, is a, a, a strange beast. If you correctly remember, uh, we accepted uh, to work on inventory in Ccamp. Uh, fully aware uh, that this draft uh, uh, wouldn't uh, fit uh, into uh, our charter because uh, it started as an optical specific document and then uh, increased to code to uh, its scope uh, increased. Um, in the meanwhile, the IV working group uh, uh, has been created. By the way, the IV session, uh, if you're interested in inventory, will be tomorrow morning. Uh, this draft will be moved to uh, to Ivy. Uh, the, 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 the optical part will be removed. Everything that is a technology specific will be removed. And here in Ccamp, we will work on augmenting the core model defined in Ivy for technology specific extensions. Um, there is not be a lot of discussion on the WDM interface uh, LMP draft, uh, as well as uh, the um, young parameters. So um, a little bit more uh, more work is needed on these ones to, um, to progress. Um, then we need to run the uh, young data review and the routing director review on the Flexi. And uh, we have uh, another draft, which is a little bit uh, um, cumbersome uh, in, in Ccamp, which is uh, the bandwidth awareness topology. Uh, this one, uh, we keep on working on that in Ccamp, but again, this is a, this is a draft which uh, uh, might uh, fit in other working groups. Scott, you're in the queue. Thank you, Scott Mansfield Erickson. That one I'm presenting in tease tomorrow. So just so that you know, I'm trying to get it off the agenda for CCAMP. And while I have the floor, I don't, do you have another slide of not on the agenda? Okay, because there is the, I submitted slides for one of my drafts. It's abyss of radio, uh, radio link. It's not, is that on your, not on the agenda slide? It's in your slot. Sorry? We, we have, uh four slide set in your slot. So you can speak about them. Uh, okay, I just your want, yeah, I wanted to say, I just want to give an advertisement for it to get people involved. Okay, thanks. Didn't want to go out. Uh, what else? Um, path computation, both optical and uh, OTN. Those are pretty stable drafts. Uh, we have dependencies on the generic path computation draft that is busy discussed in uh, INTIS, which is now going through the second working group last call. So uh, this, that dependency should be resolved pretty, pretty quickly, and we will be able to move these, uh, these drafts uh, forward. Uh, the transport and BI, we recently, pass me the term, rechartered uh, the scope uh, of, uh, uh, of the design team. Uh, we also have now a, a dedicated mailing list done. Uh, I, I've not seen if Dan has already advertised it on the mailing list or not, but if not, uh, he, will do, uh, he will do soon. Uh, then the OTN tunnel model. Uh, we need to do a better alignment with the T tunnel model. Uh, the T tunnel model is another dependency that has been there for a, for a while. Uh, there, is a, um, there is a second working group plus call going on in, in TIS to progress this document. Uh, it should have ended a few days ago, so also this dependency is, is resolved. Uh, the OTN slicing is another pretty stable document which has uh, strong dependencies on, uh, on this. That's it. Let's uh, jump directly to the next uh, presentation. Which is the data model for optical impairment aware topology. Do you want the picker? Do you want me to move the slides? No, yes. Okay. Uh, good morning uh, to everybody. <laughs> I'm uh, going to report the status of uh, 
uh, optical impairment aware topology model for, on behalf of uh, our co-authors and contributors. Okay, this is uh, the major update uh, since uh, the last ITF uh, uh, in San Francisco. Um, we <coughs> address an uh, 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 example of uh, how the vendors uh, can define uh, their operational uh, uh, modes. And we introduce uh, uh, how to use the model uh, to uh, set up uh, the, the, the operational modes. Um, we, uh, there was a, a, a very good uh, review from Roberto about uh, the document. And so uh, we modified uh, the, the, some picture related to the uh, trial regenerator. Um, and uh, uh, then the, we, we, we fixing the, some mistake uh, in the section related to the OMS uh, uh, media channel group protection model. Uh, we, th there was some problem uh, with some attributes and so modified uh, with correct uh, attributes uh, uh, aligned with the young. Uh, and we address uh, uh, Ponder constraint um, configuration uh, that was uh, um, inherited from discussion in the flexible grid contest, but then we decided that uh, the best uh, place to, to, to address that was the optical inferment uh, topology model. Uh, we, we also added a new section related to, to the dynamic uh, gain equalization. Um, uh, and uh, we, we, we added uh, a related uh, young update uh, for, uh, uh, for this topic. Next. Okay, for, for MOOCs Ponder Constraint, uh, the, the, the problem was that uh, uh, um, the, the, the traditional MOOCs Ponder, like uh, 10 by 10 gigabit, uh, have a, uh, let me say, fixed uh, mapping. Uh, between the client port uh, towards the, the line. Uh, so the, the client port uh, towards the time slot uh, related to the line. Uh, now there is also uh, some, uh, the new MOOCs ponder that instead are flexible. Uh, so the mapping on the client port and time slot may, may be provisional because it's, it's flexible. Uh, Obviously, the, the, the MOOCs ponder constraint, this type of constraint, has an impact also on, on the fact that uh, how you can uh, uh, pair uh, the client port uh, in case you have a peer uh, MOOCs ponder. Uh, so we need to support the, co the constraint disclosure towards uh, uh, MDSC. Uh, for, for, the, for the old, so with the hardware constraint, uh, MOOCs Ponder, but also the possibility to, uh, to give uh, information related to the uh, flexible case. So we introduced uh, um, parameters, interlayer sequence number, uh, that is specifically used to report uh, this additional connectivity constraint uh, uh, between the, 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 the LTP that uh, is represented uh, the, uh, the client uh, port uh, and uh, the, the, the server the layer uh, tunnel termination point that is representing the line, uh, uh, the line port. Next. So th this is an example. Uh, we have uh, two pair of uh, uh, MOOCs ponder, uh, the, uh, the top uh, pair uh, is uh, the case in you have uh, um, uh, hardware constraint, uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the other pair, pair on the bottom uh, instead are uh, uh, the flexible case. Um, uh, on, on the bottom of the slide, uh, there is the uh, model representation, so with the client port that is represented by the eight uh, LTP. Uh, from 10 to 17 uh, uh, identifier. And uh, uh, we have uh, uh, two uh, tunnel uh, that are represented by triangle uh, and is the, the tunnel termination point. Uh, 
uh, if you take the example, the, the, the red one uh, uh, in, the, in the first table uh, is an example on which uh, the, 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 the client port uh, from Muxponder A1, uh, since there is a, a Muxponder constraint, uh, uh, can be connected just to the client port 53 on the uh, Zeta1 uh, Muxponder. And in this case, uh, this has to be recognized by uh, the interlayer uh, sequence number that has to be uh, the same. So it's one for both uh, the cases. Uh, in the uh, case of the pair uh, are flexible, uh, interlayer sequence number is, uh, uh, is not set up because uh, a, a any possible um, um, couple of uh, the, 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 the client port can be, uh, can be permitted. And in fact, uh, the four uh, client port 11, 14, 15 can be um, uh, uh, coupled with the, uh, any one of the, of the other uh, part of the of the, uh, of the <clears throat> uh, Okay, we introduced the, the guideline for uh, DGE. Uh, and actually, we model the DGE uh, function in the, a different way, depending on their uh, hardware implementation. Uh, so we model that as a two degree TA node. Uh, in the case uh, that uh, uh, you terminate the OMS media channel uh, group, uh, and this is uh, based on traditional WSS based, or uh, as a new uh, OMS element uh, that is not terminated in OMS MCG, and this based with the, uh, new, the particular technology of uh, gain shaping equalization. Uh, we added uh, a specific attribute in the OMS. Uh, uh, part uh, as uh, uh, I put on the on the right of the slides, uh, uh, the younger representation. There is the is dynamic uh, gain equalizer that uh, uh, means that uh, in this case of OMS element is a DG. Uh, we added the PDL parameters uh, for amplifier level, and we also added delta power uh, that is also in the part of the RODAM, but uh, this. Uh, uh, act as a pre-emphasis uh, uh, that different with respect to what uh, uh, obtained for delta power in the RODA. Uh, in red, I put the fact that uh, we do not complete uh, uh, all, the, all the story because there is some debate uh, related for possible limited accuracy uh, in the noise figure in case of uh, 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 equivalent amplifier, so the case of OMS element. We are still uh, in discussion. Uh, we are studying a bit uh, possible impact. Uh, uh, Roberto is, uh, is making some uh, computation, let me say, uh, and, but we, we, we hope that uh, we, we solve the issue uh, soon to complete the picture for DG. Uh, about uh, the, 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 the open issue, um, there is, uh, uh, we, we have also uh, this discussion yesterday, so uh, it is not uh, completely updated, this slide, because uh, uh, the uh, issue one, uh, 123 about the boundary between layer zero, layer one, uh, is not considered a blocking point for last call in this context of optical impairment. Uh, and has been considered also more transversal, not dedicated for optical impairment, but for the layer zero in general. So has been moved to the RFC 1993 as RFC. Um, there is no uh, particular issue in this list uh, that uh, uh, need to uh, further discussion apart uh, the 153 related to the GGE, that, uh, as I said before. So is more uh, related to the homework and uh, fix some uh, part, uh, uh, in particular not in the young, but uh, uh, yeah, for some textual part in the drafts. Next. Uh, so next step. Uh, so the, the, the young model is, uh, is pretty stable uh, for a while. Uh, we added some point, but uh, the, the, the model is stable. 
the, there is a, uh, some issue that, as I said, that does not mandate a big discussion. So we hope uh, uh, to solve all these issues uh, as soon as possible and uh, to be ready for last call, uh, maybe possible for next uh, uh, ITF. Um, as usual, there is, uh, for, for whom uh, is not, uh, does not know that, uh, we have a weekly call for uh, uh, the topic for optical impairment uh, on Tuesday from 2 3 p.m. Uh, um, uh, European time, and everybody is welcome to attend. So we have a different uh, set of slides for the for RFC 1993, or is the same? Uh, is it in the same package. Okay. Okay. Because you suggest me to. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no one ever does what I say, so I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next, uh, for uh, for uh, RSC 1993, uh, we had a lot of uh, update regarding uh, the Yang. So we convert uh, the DBMT uh, using instead powering DBM for uh, the definition of the type def. Um, we uh, delete and clean up the fact definition. So uh, the fact definition that are not uh, related, uh, uh, standard reference have been deleted in the uh, identity part of the fact. Uh, we uh, update the young model uh, uh, align them with alignment uh, uh, to fix a young doctor uh, last call comments. Um, uh, they, they, there was some disalignment uh, about uh, the operational mode uh, description that uh, with respect to optical impairment. So we align uh, the, the, the description uh, and uh, uh, we change the uh, definition and, uh, uh, and the related description for flexible grid channel spacing. Uh, because there was a, a problem in the sense that channel spacing is a term that is, uh, has to be used in the context of fixed grid. And instead, uh, we used uh, uh, nominal center frequency granularity in the context of flexible grid. So we deprecate uh, the uh, old uh, um, flexible grid uh, uh, related uh, state statement, and uh, we substitute uh, with the new one. Um, and uh, we had uh, uh, related uh, new identity uh, for the granularity, base granularity, for the nominal center frequency granularity. Next. Okay. Um, then the other, other update uh, is that uh, there was some problem with the uh, reference, uh, uh, normative reference uh, related to information RFC. So uh, these uh, uh, normative reference uh, have been substituted with the real normative reference into standard track RFC. So we change uh, some uh, a pointer to uh, correct RFC. Um, uh, we, we updated the flexible grid label hop grouping as uh, depicted on the on the side uh, in the slides, um, uh, the the, uh, the flexible grid label up had a, a branching uh, that uh, can make some uh, prob provide some problem related to possible interworking because uh, uh, you could use the uh, uh, the the case of a single channel label uh, in. Uh, in two ways, so uh, as a, uh, one case for case single, or uh, you use uh, you can use the branching for super, uh, considering the uh, list as uh, uh, just one element. Uh, to avoid uh, this uh, type of problem, uh, we deprecate the uh, the super uh, case. We introduce the new one with the minimum. Uh, um, element of two. So uh, in case of single channel, you can use just uh, uh, 
the, the case for single. Um, then there is uh, the, the update of the WDM model and uh, uh, we intro they introduce uh, uh, a new uh, grouping uh, that is combining the definition that we had uh, in case uh, of fixed grid, so in the W zone and flexible grid uh, in the context uh, of uh, uh, the new scenario that support the new scenarios uh, for both the fixed and uh, flexible grid as uh, Iowa will present uh, after uh, uh, this presentation and uh, the new grouping have been uh, provided in the uh, RFC uh, in these drafts. And these uh, are the, the, the four grouping that uh, I reported there. Uh, next, uh, here is the young model definition of the grouping that I just mentioned, uh, plus uh, uh, the new grouping uh, using for uh, uh, the tuning of uh, transmitter for the range and the granularity. The step. Next. Uh, okay, open issue. Can, can we jump to the next step? So we are already. Okay. Fast. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, obviously, we, we, we would like to address uh, all the issue because our intention would be to uh, bring uh, both uh, RFC 1993 and optical impairment uh, in the same uh, uh, last call. Uh, on the same uh, time. Uh, so this is our intention to work on that, uh, to, to, to be ready for la, for last call. Any question? Uh, so I have one. Um, we already did the young data review for both, uh, uh, both documents. It was uh, some months ago. So I've not seen very big changes that require a new young data review. Do, do you agree with that? Yes. So we are waiting for the issues to be closed to go for the routing directorate review. That one, maybe yes. it will be beneficial to yes. wait, and then we can uh, we can move forward. Yes. As as we said, we will move them forward as a as a cluster. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I have one comment actually uh, for these two drafts uh, for each meeting actually. Uh, you fixed a couple of open issues and uh, said that they are ready for WG last call. But actually, there are you know uh, even more open issues coming up. So I'm not really uh, confident that they are really ready for WG last call for the next meeting. So I mean, uh, the guys, uh, can you think about how to make these drafts you know uh, stable as soon as possible because they are really quite old, right? The point is that, as I said, that the, the, most of the open issue are not uh, uh, something that has needed to be debated a lot. So all the, the point that uh, uh, should need some debate and discussion have been uh, addressed. Uh, yes, there was also some new uh, point and not issue like DGE that has been introduced. This uh, can happen, uh, but we are confident that uh, we can fix uh, uh, the, the, the remaining issue in a good time frame for the next uh, ITF uh, because the, the nothing of no one of, uh, of these, uh, there are no many of these issues that are a real blocking point. So it's something that is uh, provide, can be fixed uh, with uh, a correct homework <laughs> and update the charts. Yeah. yeah. There are more co-authors and contributors in this draft than people in the room. <laughs> and I'll, ex I'll explain. Uh, okay. So, right. Um, so, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Iwa, and I'll be uh, presenting this draft on behalf of a long list of uh, co-authors and contributors. Um, all of them are carried over from the previous two working group documents, the WDM, uh, the WSON tunnel and the FlexGrid tunnel, as well as the act current active participants uh, for this discussion. Uh, next page. Right, so as you, so it's a bit of the history, right? So we have two separate working group uh, drafts on WDM related tunnel models for WSON FlexGrid. And uh, now we have a technology migration 
that uh, asks to uh, our model to support a mixed W zone and flex grid uh, optical networking, where um, in which we have to provide a young model to support uh, scenarios that they those two technologies will coexist uh, before you know one uh, kills another, right? Um, so we. Um, and also the definitions, the model constructs uh, for WSON and flex grid, as we see, there are a lot of similarities. Most of them are actually shared. Uh, so I, uh, the, the working group feel like we don't need to redefine, make a duplicate definition across these two drafts. So the consensus is actually to merge the two tunnels into a single tunnel model, into a single common model that deals with the whole entire WDN uh, technology. Um, next to page. Uh, so yeah, then here is the logistics. logistics. Now we have two working group drafts and um, the authors are taking cautious steps just to not uh, ruin the working group process. So we decided to start from an individual draft and then uh, we are gonna uh, hopefully ask a working group uh, to adopt and then replace the two working group drafts. Um, so maybe yeah. we can take this now instead of the end of, yeah, the, of, the, yeah. of the presentation. So yeah. this, is a, this is a draft that is the merge of two working group drafts. It doesn't need to go through all the process again through yeah. IPR polling, a working group adoption again. So thanks a lot for being cautious. <laughs> But uh, I think you can resubmit it as a, a draft ITF uh, uh, CCAMP. Here you forgot CCAMP uh, in, uh, in the name of the draft, but it's okay. Yeah. And uh, as a replacement, mm -hmm. don't forget to mark the two yes. existing drafts as a replacement and not this individual one. That's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. So as soon as we get a green light to go forward, we're, we're going to take the steps. You have, you have the green light. Perfect. Uh, next page. Right, so here um, uh, a, a couple of updates to the merged draft. So we um, um, added some text description accordingly to uh, describe a unified view of, for WDM channels. And uh, now the scope, as you see, are uh, combined the WSON flex grid uh, networks. And also, the updates to the YAM model. So we um, there are separate um, model structure for the W for the W sound and the flex label uh, before and now we are creating a new combined uh, label structure for both W sound and flex grid. Essentially, reusing what we have defined uh, for uh, separately for W sound and flex grid. And also the intention of this model uh, as uh, we move forward is to support both integrated scenarios where the, uh, an open uh, optical controller uh, has full end-to-end -end control for the, for the, for the uh, uh, integrated transponders, uh, as well as uh, to support new scenarios where we have the open line system with external transponders, as well as in the packet optical uh, integration scenarios, uh, regardless of the different options we are gonna take. Um, and, uh, and also the same uh, grouping hopefully uh, will be common between the WDM tunnel and the optical path computation. And we intend to reuse it between the two models. Um, so uh, with that, we uh, the common WDM grouping has been added to the uh, RFC 9093 BIS uh, as uh, Sergio has presented before. Um, and also, a, a, uh, we added uh, uh, new parameters to allow um, a client to indicate um, certain WDM level constraints when provisioning a WDM tunnel. Um, so I will go through this in detail in the next few slides. Next, next page. Right, so basically when we create a tunnel, we allow um, a client to specify um, constraints um, for the um, both in the scope of a, the entire WDM tunnel or in the individual path uh, of a WDM tunnel that allows the, uh, the user to say, what are the operational modes of the transceivers and what are the uh, working frequency range that you want this WDM tunnel to, uh, to, uh, to, to be uh, use, using. Um, 
and uh, the uh, right as you see um, the same groupings are applied to both the tunnel um, level WDM constraint as well as the path level constraints where we have uh, and also covers the scenario for both uh, uh, starting and terminating transponder as well as the regenerated case where you have two uh, and uh, back to back uh, transceivers um, from both input and output, right, as you see on the on the right side. Um, next page. Right, so here's the a, a combined view of the uh, WDM label uh, specification uh, that has both uh, you know carries the inherits the definition from both uh, WSON where there's a fixed DWDM, CWDM, as well as FlexGrid. Uh, from the flex grid uh, label specification. Um, yeah, um, there's nothing new here. It's just a combination of the two definitions um, together and also inherits the deprecated super uh, uh, branch from the flex grid. Um, now we have the multi, uh, 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 what do you call choice statement um, in the, in the uh, flex grid label specification. Uh, next page. And here are a, a list of um, WDM uh, level constraints um, that could uh, affect how the path, WDM path is selected. And we have uh, currently you know, definitions like uh, what would be the expected uh, OSNR margin for, uh, for uh, expected WDM tunnel and whether that WDM tunnel is allowed to use regenerators uh, explicitly, or you would prefer uh, the controller to take actions and decide whether a region is used or not. And other constraints like whether wavelengths constraint, uh, wavelengths conversion uh, should be allowed, or um, what the what are the uh, algorithm for WDM uh, wavelength assignment, uh, whether you need a guard band size, and how much whether you need a guard band, and how much is the uh, is the size of the of the guard band um, and whether you support uh, um, uh, the same, use the same wavelength uh, for both forward and reverse direction or you allow different wavelength selection uh, in, in both ways. Uh, also uh, for restoration, whether retuning is enabled or not. And there's a, there's a small uh, hiccup in the uh, in the parameter called delta power, uh, where the type for the delta power um, was set to use gain um, as defined in layer zero types, uh, but the delta power could be both positive and negative. So there was there will be there, there is a change in uh, in the definition, and uh, the next revision of that will need to uh, fix it and and reflects the same changes as we do for optical impairment, right? Um, Right, next page. Right, so the next steps is to do the working group adoption to replace the W song and the flex grid uh, tunnel and also align the model with the, um, with the uh, optical path computation by reusing all the groupings um, for both models. And also uh, we'll continually to continuously to align with um, the discussion happening in uh, optical impairments. Um, and also um, there are a few um, uh, open points about the, uh, how to associate WDM tunnel, LS, uh, tunnel path with the uh, definition in optical impairment with respect to the end-to-end -end media channel path ID, right? Um, so, um, and as usual, we have the weekly team meeting um, at every Thursday, um, 8 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and so here's the WebEx call. Um, so any anyone interested in this work is more than welcome to join. Um, yeah, and hopefully we can move this um, real fast. Okay, um, comments, questions? Oh, so it sounds like everything moves. Uh, yeah, yeah. Presentation. Thank you. I saved quite a bit of time. I think the ISG will appreciate the merge of the two drafts. It's one less document to review. <laughs> <laughs>
Next one is uh, Scott. So, Scott, you have four different sets of slides. Do you want me to pull all of them? Uh, just one, two? Can you do them all in one thing? <laughs> Not possible. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone. I'm Scott Mansfield Erickson. And so I have a few drafts here. Um, there was the uh, microwave draft that we've been, microwave topology draft that we've been working on for a while. There were a couple of uh, modules that were in that draft that were, that, that were taken out and created as, as separate projects. And now we're trying to find a home for them. This uh, bandwidth availability topology is one of them. So if you go to the next slide, it's uh, very simple to um, uh, describe this because we have a microwave topology draft. Uh, bandwidth availability is a, gener a generic feature. And so we don't need to have it in the microwave um, uh, topology model. So uh, there's a GitHub, there's a draft, and so we're, I'm going to present this tomorrow in T's and see if they want it. If they don't want it, I'll take it to NetMod. NetMod takes anything. So <laughs> uh, go to the next slide. And so that's it. So um, then we're just asking for feedback now. Now we want to start progressing the technology work of that. And, and at least in CCAMP, we have a meeting every week where we talk about microwave-related things. So. Scott, one question. The, the bandwidth availability model that you were putting in the, in the microwave was too much radio related. So the, the purpose, if you move to, to right. us, would be to make wider yes. scope? Yes, absolutely. And it doesn't stop us from progressing our microwave draft, and it provides the opportunity for people to do something more than just microwave for okay. bandwidth availability. Right. Okay, thank you. I mean, but we'll start with what I have. So, <laughs> right. So the next one is interface reference topology. This is the same thing. Uh, well, not the same thing. This is another module that was in the microwave topology uh, draft that we have. Uh, we have a someone in the queue. Someone want to, you want to take it now? I, well, sure. I mean, it might not be about this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. Okay. If it's about this one, then hold on a second. <laughs> Okay, so we discussed this draft yesterday. If you go to the next slide, we discussed this draft yesterday in um, Net. Where were we? I don't remember where we were. And um, and the uh, uh, Rob Wilton was uh, under the impression that it would be good to move it out of um, uh, C Camp and have it someplace else, but he didn't know if um, NetMod was the right place. So we're continuing to look for the right place for this one. This is a draft that um, links together a topology endpoint with a uh, interface. So that doesn't need to be in a microwave topology thing either. There is uh, the TE topology draft that we have for uh, microwave is already a whole <laughs> slew of miscellaneous things. So it would really be great to be in there, but that one's not open right now. So we're trying to progress this as another augmentation. So now I'll take the question. I reviewed the draft and I saw there's uh, like uh, just one node defined to uh, build the relationship, this interface. Mm -hmm. Then, and I, I think it's right now it's just a T specific, right? You you just augment T E one, but right now we right now we yeah. actually uh, proposing a draft called uh, inventory topology and mm -hmm. trying to build a physical topology. In that way, interface can be can have correlation with like topology. Mm -hmm. So I, I think maybe we can work together to fix that out. So my question is mm -hmm. whether this should be T specific or it can be more general one. Well, it's I wanted to get it out of microwave topology because it doesn't need to be there. Yeah. If there is a more generic thing where we can tie endpoints, uh, termination points to interfaces in a more mm -hmm. generic way, I'm all ready to listen to that. So we should take that to the list and mm -hmm. decide where it goes. So we'll yeah. work with Rob and others to find the right place. We started Ivy 
with the scope of a working group of a single document if you already have eight documents. So the ninth well, is, be- is welcome. Because it is. <laughs> you sure it's not poison ivy? <laughs> okay. It's becoming. Okay. Okay, thanks. So we'll go to the next one. Was there somebody else in the queue? It's, there's a two next to... Oh, okay. Hi, Oscar. Oscar Gonzalez uh, with the TIS hat chair on, so we welcome tomorrow also to, to present the, the draft there. And uh, the decision whether it's more an inventory thing or more is a TIS thing is uh, if it uh, complies with what traffic engineering is. It. So right. if the information that you are exposing is, using, is useful to make decisions and to be able to steer the traffic better, for sure, I think this is the right place for that. Okay, so. We can discuss that tomorrow, but for yeah. preliminary conversation with our chair, we, we believe that it is it seems to be appropriate to be there. Yeah, yeah we, we appreciate all comers. Okay, so the next one is, this is an individual draft. So this is a zero zero draft. We finally decided to throw the covers off and, and uh, stick it up as a uh, zero zero. And... Um, 8561 is a draft for microwave radio link. There are some changes that we would like to make. So we've been having discussions uh, on that. If you go to the next slide, uh, if you want to track what we've been talking about, we have a GitHub and there's lots of meeting minutes on the GitHub page that show all the different things that we've been working on here. And what I would like to do with this is just make sure that I'm doing the right process to get it adopted as a working group draft. So just let me know what I need to do in the order with which I need to do it. And we can do it on the mailing list and move this thing forward and have a fruitful discussion in Brisbane. So thank you. Finally a draft that fits in Seacom. Right. Yes. A draft that fits in Seacom. That's right. Okay. And the last one. This is the one that I really hope to kick it, kick it out. It's, it's old enough to fly on its own. It's time to leave the nest. And so this is the microwave topology draft that kicked off a lot of this stuff. We have been working on this thing for oh, upwards of a couple of years now. So I think it's time for it to move on. And the if you go to the next slide. So we have had, and we continue to have lots of weekly meetings, uh, well, meeting every week anyway. And um, we, there was a last call in version five, and then um, we implemented all of those things. Tom Petch was the one that provided tons of comments, and they were great comments. It really clarified and made the draft a lot better, so we did that. If you want to see what the differences are, you can look at the diff link. And then other than the last calls, there was an alignment exercise that um, Italo was doing in all of his topology drafts as well to make all of the topology drafts look the same when it comes to uh, presence containers. So we fixed that. And so if you go to the next slide, so where we are now is what's, how do we do? We need another last call. Do you want us to do another last call? Do you want us to do an IPR call? I mean, what's the next step? How do we kick this thing out and let it fly on its own? Thanks. So you just removed pieces from the draft. You didn't add that much at least. We did not. Well, we've, we answered the comments that we were given. The only real addition, if you wanted to call it an addition, is we changed a few containers to presence containers to better align with the other topology work. So that's the only change. And then we also did take out two modules. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I, I, was che- I, I, I didn't recall by heart, so I was checking on the data tracker. Uh, it doesn't seem that we did uh, a, a young doctor review of the draft. Did we? And it's not here. I don't, I don't recall uh, well, by heart. I don't. Okay. Well, if there's a special request that we need to make in order to do a yang doctor review we didn't do that okay so so i don't i don't think it's mandatory we it's up usually do it actually uh, we i'm had okay with so doing ma- it. It so many hurt. reviews from tom tommy if i'm if yeah. not mistaken he's a young doctor is it he Sure. Okay. Well, he certainly did provide some wonderful comments on the Yang. So whether or not that makes him a Yang doctor or not, I don't know. But um, he he did a really great job. And yeah. 
do you have any suggestion, uh, John? To me, it's it's ready to move forward because plenty of reviews. Uh, we did the, the last call. Uh, okay. Okay. So just let me know. Then. Okay. That's it. That's all I had. So that was four drafts in in you know ten minutes. I'm good. Perfect. Thanks, Thanks a lot. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, hello, this is Chao De from Huawei. Uh, I'm, I'm very glad to uh, do this presentation on behalf of all the author and contributors. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, for the casting no draft, uh, today we want to introduce the uh, update we made since uh, ITF 117, and, uh, and also we raised two uh, open discussion points here. And at first, let me introduce the update we made uh, since I, uh, last ITF meeting. And first, we extend the uh, user label, which is uh, for some operator, they have some requirement to provide some uh, alias for the uh, kind signal service. And the sec second uh, extension is the assess node UI and the LTP UI. Uh, this issue was uh, raised uh, when discussing uh, discussing the TE type uh, update draft. And uh, it seems that our terminal model and kind signal model are using the identifier from the uh, T topology and not using the identifier for network topology. And here, uh, when after we uh, extend these two attributes and we can also use the network and network topology model. Uh, it is an alignment. And the second, uh, the next one uh, extension is the PM state. And for some operator, they want to provide some uh, service level performance uh, to the uh, users for some SLA uh, perspective. And uh, we also extend the arrow info, which can, could use to provide more uh, uh, vendor specific and technology specific error information while doing the uh, service uh, configuration. And the last uh, extension is the alarm threshold. And with this threshold, we can uh, give a whole uh, life cycle for the uh, maintenance. For example, we can set the uh, latency threshold for the service, and then we can recognize the service latency. And if there's a uh, uh, if the service latency exceeds the threshold, there will be a alarm array to the array to the app system. And uh, all these five extensions are also applicable to the uh, uh, internet service model. Okay, next. Okay, this is the open discussion. And the first open discussion is we want to discuss the architecture of kind signal service and also the tunnel uh, model. And in this picture, you can see that uh, there, are, there are different granularity OUK crossing connections are creating, uh, created on the intermediate nodes. And with the currently async service and tunnel model, we can only uh, say that we need to provide a current service object and the OTN tunnel object. And uh, the OTN tunnel object, it is not very clear to whether this can cover the uh, configuration of the intermediate nodes because they are in different granularity. And compared to the ITU and TMF modeling, you can see that they have provide different layer of train, including the current trail and different granularity of ODU, uh, ODUK trail and also the OTU trail. So here we recognize a several missing definition or maybe we need to enhance in our current draft. First, it is, very not, it is not clear whether the OTAN tunnel and in the async architecture can provide all the layer or ODUK and OTUK trail uh, of ITU and TML modeling. Uh, the second missing definition is that we, uh, we're not clear whether the kind signal service in the ACM model can be mapped to the uh, traditional uh, kind trail object or not, uh, and whether we need to define a new kind tunnel object. And we also see that in the Ethernet tunnel model, there is also a placeholder, uh, which was intent to define the client tunnel. The third missing point we recognize is uh, it is very not 
clear how to use the current model to create an end-to-end -end service. Because a lot of attributes uh, which is related with the service, such as the protection and restoration, and past computation policy and past constraint are defined in a tunnel model, not in a service model. So do we need to preset a tunnel at the beginning or not? And the last bullet is, uh, it is not very clear, do we need to model in the causing connection in our current data model? So in the next step, we're going to discuss all the missing definitions. Uh, next, next page. Next slide. Sorry. Okay. The next open discussion point is that whether we need a, a service levels pass computation. And currently, we have tunnel pass computation uh, APC defined in the GE model and also some extension by the OTN tunnel and WDN tunnel. Uh, but in the live network, the OTN tunnel object is not the ultimate object which is delivered to the, to the user. Uh, so uh, a wider the kind signal survey or the internet survey is, is the object which is delivered to the user. So many operators, they prefer to have a, a service level pass computation. And the next split for the uh, pass computation RPC is uh, uh, with the current uh, uh, tunnel pass computation, it can only provide the uh, uh, loop object in a single layer. <laughs> and there are some requirements to uh, specify different layer of, of resource while doing the pass computation. And also to give a end-to-end -end pass computation, which including both OTN tunnel and w WDM tunnel. Uh, this is first discussion point of the SAS, uh, service pass computation. The, the second dis discussion point is how to use the pass computation result uh, after the, uh, in the service configuration. Uh, here we reference uh, uh, the model of Tabby, and you can see in the structure there's a topology constraint, uh, which is, there will include pass and exclude pass. There's a pass UID, which is uh, pointing to the pass computation result. So I also consider, I also think that uh, it is very convenient to use or specify the pass uh, by, by the ID and when doing the service configuration. And and in cool or as cool uh, uh, or several paths is a uh, functionality uh, tunnel data model, uh, 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 a path computation is not support right now. And the in cool pass and at cool pass could be extend to be the, another use case uh, to, for example, to in cool or as cool a service, uh, which I consider it is very com common use case in the uh, operator's network. And also there could be some some other other ones uh, function if we can provide the pass object. For example, the operator thing they can do some planning uh, for a pass. They this pass uh, they don't need to generate by the pass computation. And some operator they have strong willing to control the pass information, so they can create the pass and reference the pass while doing the service configuration. Oh, next slide, please. There is a question. Okay, we are at okay. the next steps. We can take it at the end. Okay, the next step, uh, we are going to uh, figure out the, some solution for the issue we raised uh, in the open discussion. And also we are going to fix the existing issues. And also we want to cooperate with the uh, TNBAT design team and design more use cases and find more gaps. And we are also willing <laughs> to uh, welcome all the uh, experts to join this work. And okay, that's all for this draft. Thank you. Uh, Nigel Davis, Sienna. Um, just wanted to note that, in your, as you pointed to Tappy, we've, we just added a thing called Path Set, mm -hmm. which is a grouping of um, of um, paths that could be used together. So you could include a path set rather than just a set of you know, individual paths, mm -hmm. where the path set was calculated as a single, you know, I was going to say coherent, consistent unit, where each path could be an alternative. So you might want to look at the Path Set thing. It's only in um, Tappy 2.5, but that might be useful. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. thank you. Any other question? No. Thanks a lot.
Okay, it's me again. And this is the drive for the uh, optical resource performance monitoring. And I'm going to uh, do this presentation for uh, on behalf of all the co-authors. Next page, please. Okay, and at first we uh, want to introduce the uh, motivation or maybe the target of our drive. And this drive is uh, aimed to uh, cover all the functionality of legacy interface, uh, such like MTOSI and COBA. And currently, uh, you can see the table that uh, all the interface uh, are, inter are supported by our job, uh, except the, uh, the uh, interface, which is the in uh, iterator, which we can see is out of scope. And uh, this job is not a simple translation uh, from the MTOS interface to the to a young data model, and it should be harmonized with the uh, data model we have in the topology and also the inventory. Okay, next page. And uh, at the beginning of this job, uh, some people ask whether why this uh, job is optical specific, and currently uh, we. Uh, also provide some optical uh, optical specific PM indicator, which is reference from uh, ITUT, and uh, you can see that this this table is which is uh, reference from ITUT G.874. Uh, it is defined the uh, it is used to find the uh, uh, PM indicator on the uh, OTUK channel uh, channel or uh, some other other object, and we consider this. Uh, PM indicator can be used uh, in this uh, draft, but it, it is also we also found that uh, the modeling of ITUT and ITF uh, T modeling are quite different, which we also uh, tell in the last presentation, and we think if we uh, we need some more alignment, and I think we also recognize that there's a draft which is a ICNF GNM uh, draft. I think this draft could help to deal with this requirement. Okay, next page, please. And since that uh, this draft have been finished, uh, accomplished almost all the work, and I, I believe that this work is very uh, valuable job, and it can uh, fill, uh, fill out the gaps that we recognize that it cannot support the PM uh, function of tradition, a traditional PM function. So that, uh, and we consider that uh, this is the right direction and running in uh, CCAM working group. And we would like to uh, call for a working group adoption. And if it, uh, this drive is adopted by the uh, working group, uh, we want to design some candidate use cases and uh, call for contribution to the TNBI uh, design team too. And okay, uh, if any people are interested in our job, uh, we are welcome you to join our work. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? I see Nigel, you're in the queue. It's <laughs> it's from before. Okay. No worries. No worries. I'll remove you. Okay. I see no questions. So thanks a lot. Thank Let's you. move to the next one. Uh, just. Uh, I um, mean, uh, an admin thing for everyone. If you are presenting multiple uh, uh, drafts in the same slot, if you could put all the slides into a single package, it's much easier from uh, from the tool. And another thing, uh, thanks a lot to the ones that started the submitting the draft, the slides on their own. That's really good. It works perfectly. If you could put the number of your slot in the title of uh, um, of the deck, that's much easier to search when when opening that. If you could do that, that would make things much easier. If possible, yes, yes, yes. Or at least put the name somewhere in the title so that I search for numbers uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of titles. That's it. <laughs> this could be the case when I picked up where I picked up the wrong slides. In fact, <laughs> just to justify what I just said. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
transfer uh, optical resource performance monitoring, uh, fine grain configuration, done. You have uh, 18 seconds left. <laughs> I hear a lot of requirements for, for slides and things. Do we still need chairs, you know, if we end up doing all these things? That you want to... <laughs> um, no, you don't. So, so one, one just quick um, preamble. Did, did anyone give an update to the TMBI this morning? Because uh, we had a side meeting yesterday. Is it what's worth me giving a 60-second update on that? Well, too late. I suppose I've got the microphone now. Um, yeah, so yesterday uh, we had a side meeting, uh, essentially an informal meeting for the Transport MBI, where we wanted to kind of really kickstart and actually uh, get moving uh, and, do, and, do, and do some work. So essentially, I'll send an update at some point to the list, but we've identified uh, two use cases that we're going to focus on. First, remember that sort of the chart of the scope of the TMBI is really to take some of the work that we've done and we're in the process of doing. Uh, so these data models, the ingredients, uh, blend them together in a recipe, you know, how we actually use some of these CCAM data models to solve specific problems. In this example, what we're going to work on first is inventory. And then using that inventory, extrapolating it from the network and being able to create a topology for layer zero plus one. And then we can kind of use that as the enabler for, for other maybe more complex use cases. So what's the output here? It's not internet drafts, it's not RFCs, it's really best practice. If we find any issues, maybe we can move those back and actually fix them. Maybe it's just you know, minor things that are really implementation specific because we're going to have JSON, we have code, we're going to publish on the GitHub. Um, it's, it's really what we should be doing with IETF technology, showing people how to use it. So th does it make sense to start from inventory right now that we don't have the core model for inventory? I think it's stable enough. Yeah. Yeah. Tell the Ivy guys, uh, not not uh, not <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not sure they are com fully convinced, <laughs> but yeah. My problem. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, uh, there is uh, some uh, convergence. Mm -hmm. We will start uh, the working group adoption pretty pretty soon. So, most likely, I don't expect uh, major differences with respect to what we have now. But yeah. keep an eye on that, uh, just, so in, just in case. So we are. So we are only focused on the optical domain for a start. If, if, if it turns out actually during this process and we run our simulation and generate our examples, we find out there are gaps. That's great. It's a feedback that's loop even better. Yes. To, to the IV folks. Cool. Oh, and we have a mailing list and I'll send that out as well. So anyone's welcome to join, or at least it will be archived as well. Cool. Um, yes, my presentation. So this is an individual document, relatively uh, recent proposal. It's got ACTN in the title, which means Daniele gets a euro for each new document. Has ACTN as the editor of the ACTN framework. So what is this document? Yeah, what is this document? That's, I remember. It is. Um, it, essentially, ACTN is about abstracting network resources uh, using this sort of um, functional architecture of our CNC, MDSC to the PNC and setting up end-to-end uh, -end connections, uh, but essentially the MDSC talking to the, to the PNC through uh, the MPI. So this brave new world of abstraction uh, for uh, traffic engineered networks. However, it turns out that in other standards organizations, they have things like MTOSI, CORBA, uh, and in TMF, you have these sort of uh, uh, management uh, components uh, and models. And then when you're looking to set up new services through your shiny abstraction uh, interfaces, you might actually want to monitor those services. You might have uh, particular alarms uh, information that you'll need. Uh, you might actually want to do some fine grain control uh, of these services as well through of course, your MDSC to your PNC. Uh, so what, I, what we've tried to do, there's a couple of authors on this document, is think about how ACTN can continue to evolve and address some of the requirements of the more sort of traditional uh, OSS, sort of NMS type uh, infrastructure. So it's not replacing that, you know, potentially this, if you're building and deploying something that's based on ACTN, then essentially you're augmenting or enhancing it using some of these proposals. Uh, next slide, please. 
uh, you you will continue to use obviously the uh, IF uh, the IETF technologies that are uh, available to us. We want to use the existing models wherever possible. It turns out actually inventory uh, could be a very powerful. Um, data model or series of data models for extracting information. So now you can kind of uh, uh, build a network view, not only on topology, but actually on the inventory. You're not necessarily what's online and in service, but what could be uh, available. And of course, there's information that is available through the inventory, even if it's online and available or even being used, that you can't get from your topology <laughs> models. Now, this isn't uh, necessarily in either or, these aren't sort of ACTN, fine grain management for ACTN or fine grain network management for ACTN is not mutually exclusive to ACTN. It's just a sort of continuation. Uh, and it, it, it's much more about sort of achieving some of the more traditional uh, MF cap. So the sort of fault configuration, uh, accounting, performance and security, yes. Uh, and I, I, for this week, I've just been focusing more on security as well. And it just seems to be uh, some gaps uh, that we've just assumed that optical is relatively secure because we've got a, a cabinet somewhere or we've got a site. We put our equipment in and the, it, the system's hardened because there's a big fence or it's a locked data center. But now we've got optical devices that are deployed, maybe in more public locations. Uh, there's a whole new series of new optical technology that be, could be co-located with uh, other types of equipment as well. So security, very important. Uh, and maybe... For some devices, we don't need a NetConf interface. We don't want the protocol state management of NetConf. We want to use a REST API as well. Next slide, please. Uh, so ASCII art, thanks, Adrian. This is a relatively straightforward uh, diagram, but you can see uh, with the traditional sort of ACTN architecture on the left there, <coughs> and then expanding it, excuse me, showing sort of where um, ACTN, FG and M, SIPs. So we'll have interfaces, of course, to uh, the existing um, topology uh, instance, uh, as well as now the ability to sort of query directly our inventory. But also, uh, as uh, Chowder just kind of highlighted, maybe some performance monitoring. Uh, maybe there are additional tweaks that we can perform uh, to optimize the signal in the optical space. You know, there may be some nonlinear effects where we want to extract. You've got a cool piece of optical hardware uh, that's actually capable of measuring some um, optical, physical uh, impairment. Now you can potentially export that information for other purposes. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so you'll see on the left again, it's just you know, how we typically use ACTN, so the sort of sort of models that we have available within CCAMP and of course uh, T's as well, sort of some ancillary uh, uh, Yang models, how they're used. We've got our sort of patented, it's not really patented, but it's our default uh, uh, optical topology that we use across the different use cases and examples in CCAMP and T's where we've got sort of POI packet running over optical with an interdomain link. Uh, but what you're seeing on the right is potentially the enhancement, you know, the, 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 the subtle uh, uh, increase in terms of fine grain capability, new models that have been recently introduced and potentially uh, will need additional models. So this would be kind of new work to solve. And maybe we need to prioritize what the use cases are for ACTN, FG and M. Maybe it's uh, performance monitoring. Maybe it's some configuration uh, example for optical networks. Note sort of the operative word there. I've only talked about optical so, so far. Uh, but the red lines are kind of the ACTN, FG, and M. And the black line is just still sort of full abstraction using sort of traditional uh, ACTN. Next slide, please. <laughs> Conclusion, yes. So is this a good idea? You know, do, do we need this or should we just continue to operate two completely distinct OSS uh, silos uh, of software? Should we be looking to actually continue the deployment and use of ACTN, but now sort of adding additional functionality that allows some of the sort of FCAPs, Corba, MTOSI, uh, traditional interfaces to be 
uh, used in the context of ACTN? If so, what, what are the use cases? You know, what, what are the killer apps? Uh, what's missing? Uh, can we use the existing models? Uh, it, it Certainly, yes, but there are some gaps. What will the new models uh, look like? Obviously, we want to augment as much as possible. We don't want to sort of keep re reinventing. I, I need to stop, so I'll stop. Questions? So everyone agrees. So. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> to move on to the next presentation. <laughs> so is, the, uh, so I, I personally, I think this is really useful. Is As a uh, chair? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> Even more. <laughs> but uh, um, so is there a reason why you did this just for optical uh, and not uh, generic to cover uh, yes, to cover everything because i'm lazy okay um, and, and that's a good answer it uh, kills the discussion okay next question <laughs> hi scott mansfield erickson so a um an observation i think one well two observations one this is a good idea because we have to stop talking about m tozy and corbett at some point so but the um the other comment is that Something that we're seeing in um, passive optical equipment and topologies is that there is a massive explosion in the amount of instances that you need in order to support a topology. So I would just put it out there that, yeah, I would just put it out there that um, we'll be we'll be watching, but we'll also be telling the, uh, our passive optical folks to look at this and to evaluate to make sure that we don't have any issues with swinging signs. We don't have any issues with the uh, bloat of instances or have some way to cache the instances or some way to organize them in an interesting way so that uh, this will function efficiently. Thanks. And this could be a binary answer, but can you tell me the difference between an alarm, an incident, and a problem? An alarm, an instance, and a problem? Yes. yes. Good. I'm going to come and talk to you. Offline okay. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Italo Buzzi. I have a comment on this folly for optical. Uh, I, I think this belongs to some, what I would say, a, a sort of gray area. Because in optical networks, we have multiple layers, zero, one. And we usually define things as generic as possible. But uh, so this most of this work is really generic huh? but in practice i wonder whether it's going to be used uh, outside of the optical transport networks for layer two or layer three so is this qualify as generic or uh, technology specific or something in between <laughs> this was much more elaborated than uh, because i'm lazy this is, this is a good answer yeah. <laughs> All right, I uh, from Huawei uh, from Futureway. I'm just trying to point out uh, since you talk about like, extending the work to outside the scope of transport, and hey, also I, I'm not right. Right, and <laughs> Scott mentioned about the pack passive optical networks. Mm. I wanted to say like in BBF, we are also doing having the same effort and trying to create data models that actually align, try to align with IETF. Um, we have also the same concept for topology and inventory. Mm and where we will be de developing all of the uh, management uh, capabilities. So that's, okay. that's yeah, the that's other good. effort that as, a, as far as I'm involved. I mean, the more people, organizations that use ITF, the, the better, right? So, okay, it's a consideration. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Julian. Hello, everyone. Julian Merrick from Orange on behalf of my co -hota. Okay, so this is a refresh of a document I have been already presenting in the past. Uh, the idea here, and it's nice to be presenting after Sergio, who mentioned the transponder mode concept about the optical impairment draft, because the idea here is to fill a gap 
that has been identified on our side between the capabilities that we are um, describing in the young module about optical impairment, namely here the transponder mode, and to fill the gap that we see in the RZPT signaling protocol. Uh, because as far as we know, there is no standard way to carry that information in existing RSVPT specification. So we want you to get it covered and make sure that we have the, the, the full tool set to cover this very useful uh, concept in the signaling um, protocol from GMPLS suit. So uh, we have tackled two main, or we have put the problem in two, two subcases in the document. Uh, one is the usual single administrative domain where the transponder is part of the, the, the optical line. Uh, and the other one, the second one, is the case where the transponder may be, the transceiver may be out of the uh, optical line uh, domain, the of usually called alien case. And the idea that we are proposing here is uh, suitable to both cases. So we believe that uh, using a single um, or a common extension to the protocol enables the protocol to cover both use cases. So we're happy with that. And this is what we propose here. Uh, more in details, we also reuse the, the, the ideas that are specified in the uh, optical impairment uh, young module draft. Uh, well, uh, maybe a uh, detail later. Um, and we are able to support uh, the mode that are specified in a um, per um, uh, entity uh, way or the explicit mode that describes a detailed set of parameters. Uh, using uh, different encodings, of course, but uh, both approaches that were described within the optical impairment draft are also encompassed here. So can we move to this? So roughly the, the solution principle, we consider that the knowledge of the optical um, resource uh, routing on wavelength allocation is on the optical line. So whether a transponder is in the optical line or outside, the optical line is in charge of the computation, whether it's embedded or external using a, a controller, PC, or whatever. That's out of the scope of the document. But the, the signaling here has two modes of carrying the, the mode. Either it's known at the beginning because we start at the, the edge of the optical line and the mode is already selected and it's carried towards the other end, the other end transceiver. Or the mode is unknown at the starting transceiver and it's allocated downstream with the, the edge uh, within the, uh, at the edge of the, the optical line. And we provide the means in the signaling protocol to carry this information and make sure that the, there is coordination between both end transceivers at the edge at the end of the signaling session and the optical line between them. Next, please. So uh, back to the details. Uh, we try to, to follow what has been defined in the, in the optical impairment of the young modules. So there is a way to carry a compact OPEC identifier referring to the transceiver mode, uh, which is a quite efficient and a common way to point to a mode associated to the transceiver without giving too much detail that may be either complex to specify, identify, or agree on in case of um, multi-vendor environments. So this is a um, uh, pretty easy way to, to identify a mode and it, it is aligned with one of the options that are available from the optical uh, young module, optical impermanent young module. And the other way, yeah, the next place, yeah. I was not sure. <laughs> yeah, sorry. 
next time I take the clicker. Um, and the way is also supporting uh, the explicit mode also mentioned in the young module draft where we can carry some detailed uh, parameters. Uh, so it can be a quite long list of attributes depending on what we really need to specify to describe a given mode within a transceiver. So the idea was to uh, add some subtle Vs that may be uh, adjusted or um, within a list that may be uh, incrementally um, uh, built depending on the number of parameters we want to convey. So the proposal here that may be discussed with the Wonky Rook, of course, the proposal here is to start with a, a base set of parameters that are part of the uh, initial TLVs and then add some other attributes that are specified within the um, optical impairment draft as optional sub TLVs and make the, the, the signaling protocol able to carry any of them using the appropriate sub TLVs that could be uh, included depending on how we want to specify explicitly a transceiver mode using the signaling protocol. Next, please. So, quick summary on the changes with respect to the previous question that I uh, previously um, presented. Uh, so, the main change is about this sub set of sub TLVs. Uh, before, uh, I, uh, after my previous presentation, I got some feedback that uh, it wasn't clear about my, I wasn't clear about my intent here, and uh, it wasn't obvious to everyone that we weren't trying to define any new optical modeling of the parameter set. Here, we are just reusing what is defined in some existing working document within, within CCAMP. So the idea was to clarify that point. Uh, we don't want to propose a new modeling at all. We want to be able to carry what is defined from uh, existing reference optical implement documents and carry them within the existing signaling protocol without trying to propose any other way to, 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 to model the, the optical attributes, of course. So we felt that it was a, a fair comment um, to us, it's been clear from day one, but maybe it wasn't clear enough when I presented last time. So we wanted to make sure that it is well understood now. The idea is to remain consistent with existing working group documents, and especially once the optical impairment draft becomes RFC on the receiving table, it will be the reference on the list of attributes to be included in the sub TLVs within the RZPT extension here. So the idea is to keep that target um, in mind and not specify any alternate way to do it. Uh, there are some minor changes with respect to editorial stuff, so I don't think we need to go over them. Next, please. So the next step, uh, as I just said, uh, keep the alignment. It's part of the existing uh, initial work and we want to make sure it will remain part of the, the target to keep alignment on existing uh, work within CCAMP and not to be an alternate pass on what are the expected optical attributes there. Uh, so, if the working group agrees to go that way, we have to be a bit more specific in the description within the draft on how to encode the sub -TLVs. This is not a, a very uh, complicated issue to, to address, to, to include in the draft. Uh, so, it's a matter of taking some time to write them down, but nothing complicated at all. So, based on that, I'd be happy to know if the working group is interested in, in this work, um, if adoption could be considered at some point. Thank you. So, I see how you, you needed to be brave uh, to propose an RSVPT draft in the young era. So yeah, for that. you know, I'm quite old <laughs> <Maybe>. now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I like to be brave sometimes. Yeah. Now, uh, while uh, Obian is taking his question, uh, uh, do you want to pull uh, the the floor? If you want to, your chair here. I do that. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, Hamia speaking from Huawei. Uh, yeah, we are quite excited to see this work uh, uh, as a complementary or as a harmonization with uh, young modules for the impairment. Uh, but I'm trying to clarify the scope of this work a little bit because in the problem safety space, you see uh, this is more focusing on the signaling. But actually, a lot of capabilities uh, is. Uh, more uh, more prepared in advanced. That means it can be also a routing problem. Say before the uh, signaling is done, we get everything prepared. So shall we also consider that in the scope of this document? Not of this document, but you're oh. right that uh, it will also imply maybe to um, revise the old OSPF uh, uh, document that was <laughs> also associated to that kind of approach. And it would make sense to make it consistent to the existing young module about optical impairment and see how we could accommodate that into OSPF. Yeah. So I agree that it would be consistent if we want to go that way. So the idea of this document is just to deal with the RSBT part, but I agree that the OSPF part would make sense as but well. My current and maybe the LMP part as well. But yeah. it's... OK, then uh, my taking from the answer is the dictionary is already over there, but we need to uh, uh, agree on where to put in the protocol set. Yeah. OK. Hey, yeah, please. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I have the same questions. Uh, I mean, uh, basically, if it's a pro if it's a, if it's a, if it's extension to exchange uh, 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 transceiver information between the the uh, uh, um, transceiver and the uh, line system, then I think OSPF TE would be the best place to put the extension. Uh, so for the OSPF TE path message. Do you intend to send it end to end, or just between the two, uh, between the, the transceivers and the, the, the edge of the line system? Uh, the idea was to carry it end to end to enable okay. both transceiver to check that they are enabling on configuring the same mode consistently at each end of the wavelengths. Okay. Um, the idea was to carry it bidirectionally from one end to the other end. Mm -hmm. So I okay. think it's clearly explained in the draft itself. Maybe I was a bit too summarized there in, right. in the, today's presentation. Okay. Just to but make if sure. you want to go over the draft itself, I'm happy to talk to you and go okay. into the details and improve it if you feel that sure. it isn't clear. Sure. And one additional question to this one of the slides, if you can scroll to back to the... Oh, it's uh, still polling. Uh, the, the, yeah, this one. So basically, you said uh, uh, there are some fields. Could you some change uh, uh, changes that you could send back configuration from the line to the transceiver, which to me means like you could actually perform the configuration part of the work um, from the line system to the transceiver, right? Yeah. Okay. It's part of the option support or the options supported by the draft. In case the wavelengths on power and stuff allocation happens at the line system on the transceiver, the transceiver is outside. Mm -hmm. Then we use a specific code point to say, I'm blind and I don't know what to use. And mm -hmm. it's on the ResV message that the transceiver gets the information about the label. Right. So for the wavelengths or also for the mode. Right. So this means that we will have a consistent controller or, or and, um, um, GMPLS controller or control plane that can coordinate the configuration yeah. end to end. That's why for us it really matters that it's a consistent because okay. there could be uh, used in environment where you have some external or centralized controller supporting some of the features we are discussing you, you within young modules and down to the NEs, we may be using GMPLS. And yeah. There is no uh, opposition between them, so we really want them to be consistent to, with each other. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. 
Well, Daniel, well, Daniel solves the logistic issues. I'm pretty sure that most of the interested folks attended the side meeting yesterday. So I believe this, this and the next <laughs> ones, I, I, I don't think they will add anything new so far at the moment. We already had one hour and a half meeting yesterday. Maybe they can finish the meeting right now. No, 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 I mean, we still, I think we still need to talk more to each other. Before we start, we are at the last block, uh, the last topic uh, of the presentation today, which is all uh, about uh, pl coherent pluggables. As we said on the mailing list, uh, uh, Fatai, Luis and I will not be acting as chairs for these drafts, which, because we are uh, heavily involved uh, uh, in, uh, in all of them. So in order to have uh, maximum uh, transparencies and fairness uh, uh, with uh, each, uh, each document, uh, we decided uh, to step down as chairs for these, uh, for these documents and Julien uh, will, be, will be acting, uh, uh, he volunteered to be acting as chair uh, for, for these documents. As you prefer. Okay, Joska, please. Okay, so so here, uh, what we are basically talking about is that the you know that the, the IP routers uh, will will start to, to have soon the new technology about coherent pluggables, and uh, we need to be able to manage the whole solution. And in order to that, we are let's say putting the uh, this management in the context of the ACDN, okay? So what we want is to be able to uh, use, continue using existing frameworks here. So you got the pointer to the, to the parent draft, the POI applicability, which was for this overlay scenario in which the, the, trans, the transponders are decoupled, okay? So you had the, the routers with gray interfaces and the optical uh, separated from here. What we want to do is to uh, create, or to, at least to, to document, the set of use cases uh, that operators uh, require okay, for this type of management and try to guide okay, which are the, the junks that need to be used in the control architecture and also include the, this one. So if you can move forward, we can go to the, to the relations with, uh, as we mentioned, the, let's say the, the parent we wanted to, yeah. the, what is the relation of this work with other works? So the parent document is, or the parent framework is the ACTN framework. And within the ACTN framework, the packet over optical that it's in, it's in this. And there what is discovered is basically the inventory. Okay, I can know what is there in my network, be able to provision the service and discover the topology. and also combined with the uh, service part. Okay? So even we can say, hey, I want a layer three VPN and trigger all the infrastructure creation from there. Also a separated work that was done in, in this for the service assurance, also that uh, included what happens when there is failures, when, it, when it, there's degradation and it involves the coordination of the IP and optical layers. And then now, this is the point where we are now, is the <coughs> particular case where the routers, instead of just being routers that take care of layer two and layer three, they also need to a little bit take care of the layer one and layer zero and collaborate with the rest of the world. So go to the next one. So here, which are the scenarios that we are targeting? So we are basically for this particular line of work targeting two scenarios. The first one is very simple. It's just 
the optical infrastructure is, is dedicated, so there is this uh, point to point connection between the routers. So uh, the optical infrastructure where they are going, where there is a, a MUX ponderance, some amplifiers, etc., is not shared with uh, the other coherent channels of other optical uh, of other needs. Uh, it is used for the especially used for the low power CSR and uh, it's short distances. And the second scenario, which I think is the more complex one, and the, which is where we have more, more debate, is where we are uh, reusing the infrastructures. Okay, we have metro regional optical networks, and over them we will carry <coughs> our uh, coherent signals coming from the, the transceivers, whether they are uh, from the same vendor as the line or they are disaggregated. And also now the new player comes into town, that is the, the routers that also send their pluggable signals over that. And in this one, so this is so this is where we need to coordinate also with the line system. And here, uh, the or how the industry ambitions to go is not to replace and to com get rid of transponders in the network. No, no. it will be um, that progressively there will be some connections that are done from the routers and the rest will be done from the regular. So go on the next slide, please. Uh, so what are the, the requirements? I think these are the requirements that uh, we went through uh, yesterday in the in the side meeting. So the higher the, the top priority number one requirement of the operator uh, is about having the end-to-end -end visibility of, of what is happening. Okay, so uh, and as part of this end to end visibility to see from layer three, layer two, and the optical channel, uh, what, is, what is happening, what we need is to be able to uh, know, okay, what are the connectivity between the router and the, and the network, be able to discover the whole topology, both the optical and IP, and to be able to do the end to end uh, performance, and especially the um, end-to-end -end alarm uh, correlations, okay? So, so we know that, uh, so we can know that uh, when some failure is happening in some part of the optical, what is the routers that are affected, etc. okay? So that, uh, number one, end-to-end -end visibility. And then the rest are, are a bonus, okay? So at the end, we can perfectly live with just some manual configuration of the, uh, of the router, just enter, just um, program, the, the frequency, program the, the, the power, and then uh, let, it, let it operate. Okay. So next one would be uh, the bonus, the service provisioning. Okay, perfectly fine. Then combine not only the, the end to end optical, but the IP optical. This is very aligned with the, what was already done in, in POI. So because in the end, you will be provisioning um, IP, uh, IP links. Also, extending lags. Also, this is similar to, I think, not much changes here. So, the idea is to be able to grow, to grow in capacity and uh, have a link that can grow in capacity. Working in assurance, telemetry, optical restoration. You see, we have it quite bottom down in the um, uh, in the set of requirements. We can start without that and then go to maintenance uh, operations. So, I think we have. Some questions here, yeah. So this is Alex Tanku. Just a question. Do we envision this work going further uh, to the microwave domain, for example, or you keep it just optical? For now, I think it's just, just optical. But I mean, unless at some point the microwave device also starts having the pluggable inside, with might, might be feasible, okay, that but taking into account that we are talking about coherent pluggable, so you, the, the output is expected to be in the order of um, 100, from 100 to 400 and, and beyond. So I don't know if the capacities are matching or if you expect that the microwave devices also become multi-layer devices. So if so, it will be, it will be included. Thanks. So just... Um, there is also audio. You want to take yeah, it now or at the end, Oscar? Oh, just okay. a quick clarification. Oh, you sure. said end to end alarm correlation at the MDSC, whereas for um, if you're talking about 
IP and optical correlation that yeah. needs to be done at the NDSC, but for optical between pluggable and, and, and the OLS, yeah. uh, I think it could be done at the optical PNC for maybe, option one and three. Right? Yeah. Maybe we can leave out where later. <laughs> yes. or, or, or. What, what, what we need is the, is the correlation, IP and optical, and also only, only optical. But what we need to know is what, what, what is happening in, the, in, in our network. And when something happens, the, the, the full picture includes the, the router. Probably we needed to define also what end-to-end -end means. End-to-end yeah. -end is optical or is end-to-end? End-to-end uh, uh, -end now it starts in the IP. So yes, it's now, sorry, it's the, the new guy came into town. So no, <laughs> you cannot separate like the transponder before. So just, just to go quickly through the next slide, just to not, not enter into the detail. We know we have the, in this draft, we are presenting two, two I think with this one, with the requirements, we are okay. Okay. I think just, just to, uh, because I think how much time do we have? Because yeah, are, probably we should, if we you, should, you should keep. If you're closing one minute, we leave all sorts okay, so together. Have, to yes, we have just the, the, the two options. Once we, uh, everything goes through the IP, the IP control is the one, only one controlling, and then another option that is uh, the, I, the read, uh, the read information goes to the optical controller. So the optical controller can do the end to end visualization, monitoring, etc., of the optical uh, part, and the IP optical is done at the hierarchical level. All of this is aligned with the STTN framework architecture, and what we want is to be able to, to, to progress here. Just, if you go to the last slide, just to, I think it will be... What animation is this? <laughs> yeah, because we have in my the, line. This is just a reminder of the, of the two of the two options presented in the draft and why we think that the what they say the main the main issue that we want to avoid is having the 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 IP controller with the, the IP device controlled by multiple <laughs> controllers. Okay, that's, the, that's the main challenge here that, mm -hmm. that we had. And here the what we want to keep working is with with operators, uh, keep prioritizing the use cases, keep enhancing the the that the requirements are are clear and address some uh, some cases, for example, like the end-to-end -end performance, the internal alert correla correlation that were not in this draft. Maybe we need to to expand it and keep getting feedback and keep collaborating. So, thank you. Finish. So we have time to, for the other draft. Thank you, Oscar. No other question from the room. Well. Before you leave, Oscar, I just wanted to say that uh, contrary to your introduction, I believe that the meeting yesterday, even if it didn't bring any conclusion, was pretty useful, at least to me, uh, because I realized that there was probably some misunderstanding on too much dependency on what's coming from other work out of the ITF. So after thinking about it, uh, I feel that um, this document, which is informational, is here on the purpose to scope the work of the upcoming standard track specification that the group will handle later down the road. So uh, based on that, I believe that the picture you're using to depict option two, meaning the NBI towards the um, the, the, the NE, the single NBI, is enough to specify on scope the work. Everything in the, is in there. So my first take would be drop option one from there. But I'm also, maybe my neighbor will disagree. So considering that you may want to also talk to people outside of the IETF with this document, I think a trade-off could be to consider mentioning the obvious in an appendix, meaning that uh, the multiple NBI options is just a particular use case of the default one. So you may include it in an appendix to teach people out of the OTF that obviously, if you want to talk to multiple controllers from there, it's part of the base architecture, but I believe that you should be bring more focus on the proposed COP from the draft which is informational, 
clarify the body of the document, maybe add some small pieces into appendix, and then move on. And you also have some other homework to do from your later slides. So I also agree you should consider them. Thanks. It seems that Adrian has. Adrian is coming to the mic, I guess. Uh, thanks, Adrian Farrell. Um, I, I, like, I think I like what Julian just said, which it sounds like the, the side meeting was productive and there may be scope for a little bit more work pushing that to see what can be merged so we don't have to throw out options, we can pool everything. I had a question for Oscar on the operator requirements. Um, yeah, he didn't mention security. And I just wonder, you know, do the, uh, do the oper operators not really care? Yes, we, we, men we, mentioned yes, we mentioned yesterday that it, is, uh, it needed to be included, but that it was not in the, in the first thing that we needed to solve in this IP optical. Uh, uh, let me say that it was in one of the, let's say, influences of having these options was also security there. So maybe we didn't cite it properly, but it was like more in the, in the area. But we would definitely include security uh, there. Don't forget it in the homework. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Reza Rukui from uh, Siena on behalf of co-author. The, the second draft in the area of the mm, uh, uh, optical pluggables uh, will be presented here. So the first, the, this portion of that sli uh, this slide deck has been presented yesterday at the uh, side meeting that we have. The first two slides, it's showing the general background to make sure that we are talking about the same thing. And as we go through the, the slides, I will show, I will demonstrate what has been done uh, and what is proposed. And uh, at the end, we need to make a decision together, you know, what is the overall architecture and proposal for, uh, from the CCAM should be. So when we talk about pluggables, the right hand side, uh, the left hand side shows a router, two routers, R1 and R2. They are connected together. From the router perspective, this is just an IP link. It is very simple. From the underlay perspective, if we go with the traditional architecture, we will have a dark fiber connected to the transponder connected to the photonic line system. So this is a traditional way to basically uh, carry over IP over DWDM. On the right hand side, if you take the transponder and the gray optics and smoosh them together and put inside the router. Basically, it becomes a pluggable, coherent plug, co uh, co optical pluggables, which at this point, from the IP perspective, the paradigm is exactly the same. There is an IP link between two routers, but from the underlay, there is a difference. And this is the whole idea that at this point, IP physically has two characteristics, IP and photonics. And this is the idea that we want to address on the right-hand side, what is the best way to control the network on the right-hand side. It used to be the separate controller on the left-hand side, but now it's not the case anymore. So having said that, it is also important to consider that we are not talking about either or, but rather complete. In other words, I extended the picture in the previous one between R1 and R2. I added two or more routers at the bottom, R3 and R4, and now they are connected through the transponder. So in other words, as we go forward, the architecture that we have to have at CCAM should address a network of the IP routers connected through pluggables, rodents, and transponders. And all of them should be addressed. We cannot have a solution to control pluggables, have another solution transponders, because the reality, the network has all of them together. So it's not either or. And this is very important to consider. If you are just talking about the network with pluggables, the solution is completely different. If it is only transponder different, but when together, we have to make sure we address that. So having these two as a background architecture, CCAM addresses, as Oscar mentioned, there is one draft, the draft that Oscar mentioned previously. There are so-called two options, option one, option two. So there are 
optical domain, there is a mm, packet domain, and there are two controllers, and there is a controller or proxy or orchestrator at the type to just control the whole ecosystem. Option one is giving the ability. Let's be very clear about the configuration and assurance. From the configuration perspective, nothing changed. Router configured everything inside the router, including pluggables. However, from the perspective of the assurance, now we have an ability to get this information to optical controller. So with this one, the, this uh, optical services that we used to have from transponder to transponder, now it's from pluggable to pluggable. With this option, definitely the optical controller cannot do that in di uh, directly anymore. If I want to create a pluggable to pluggable configuration, I have to do pluggable through the proxy, which is northbound, and also the uh, optical uh, network can be controlled there. So in other words, optical control doesn't have that view that uh, used to have from the pluggable to pluggable, from transport to transport. But from the assurance, it seems that it's doing it because we are getting the read-only data. However, option two is very strict. Everything inside router controlled by the, the IP controller, everything inside the uh, optical network uh, uh, with the optical controller. With this architecture, again, the service that used to have from transport to transponder right now is neither configurable from the optical controller nor that we can assure and get the telemetry from that. So everything should happen through the northbound proxy. So these are two valid options. They have their own merit. And this is the whole idea of option. Option means that you, as an operator, think which one is the best, and you uh, go through that. So having said that, our draft, a uh, new draft that we have, contains three distinct characteristic or area. One is, regardless of which option you want to do as an operator, we have a set of requirements. Definitely, as we go forward, we can combine this, whatever uh, Oscar mentioned as a use case or use uh, requirement. We started a group of the requirements. Just think about when you want to have the control, the network that we de uh, define, do you have considered these requirements, regardless of the, which option you want? And you pick your option which fit, uh, best fit you. The second uh, area of the draft, we are explicitly defining a third option, option three. And last but not least, we mentioning the clear demarcation between the optical and uh, uh, the packet uh, you know, functions. So to this end, this is option three is exactly the same as before. The only difference here is now optical controller has read, write, on uh, access to the pluggables. In other words, from the previous... Uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry, we're running out of time. Could you wrap up sure. quickly, please? Yeah. So in this case, we are introducing this uh, read, write, access to the pluggables. With this one, we can have the both configuration assurance from the one entity. Since I don't have time to go through more detail, one thing which is important is the red box that I put here. There are sometimes the, the, about the access of uh, two different interfaces to a single node for the different perspective of the Yang tree. There is a very well-known RFC and the net one and netconf that gives you the access to control that access. It's important to consider that. These are the a group of uh, requirements that we have, and I selectively put some of them here. But again, since we don't have time, these are the requirements that is very generic, has nothing to do with any of those options. And last but not least, the idea of the, the very second line, this option is complementing option one and two. And it's very important to consider. These are options and complementing. And from that aspect, uh, there are two proposals that we can go uh, from now, and either of this solution is acceptable, uh, uh, po potentially acceptable solution. The, from the second perspective, and I put them in red, one solution is there are two drafts, combine them to two drafts as a one draft. 
a simple uh, view of the solution one. Solution two, for some reason, if we don't want to go with that, we can have a umbrella, a framework uh, requirement document as a draft. Uh, from there, we can point to two drafts which one is option one and two, another one is option two. Oh, and I'm afraid we need to stop here because there is one remaining presentation on the agenda. So I have some comments. I will send them, send them on the list. Um, if there are other people in the room who have questions, comments, please use the mailing list. Uh, and I'll do the same on my side. Okay, thank you very because much. Because I have some. Thanks. Hello, all of you. Um, good morning. I'm, I'm sorry that I couldn't, couldn't stay on site. I'll, I'll try to be very quick with this presentation now. Can you, can you hear me all right? Yes. Yeah. OK. Um, basically, Paul, Doolan, and I, we, we, we've been looking at, at, the, at the topics we just discussed in the last two, in, in the last two uh, presentations and, and also in the, in the session yesterday. Um, and we, we do think that, that the operational and security, con security topics that they relate to real world use cases of, of packet optical integration are not really properly addressed in, in, the, in the work we've done so far. And if you move to the next page, then I try to be very quick. Um, we've seen discussion of, of, these, of these different approaches to control, uh, to, of the different control architectures that people are using for control plugins in their routers. There's, and, and those different approaches are being discussed in different organizations, and not just in ITF, but also in Telecom Infra Project, uh, in, in Open Rodem, in, uh, in sometimes in scientific work. And, and basically, um, besides, basically all of them concern not the question who decides on certain packet functionality or decide, takes decisions on certain optical functionality, though that, that work split between optical and packet controllers is actually very clear. Um, all, of these, all of these different approaches actually govern how does the information get to the pluggable, how do you write information to the pluggable in the end, right? And how does the information from a pluggable get to, to an optical controller that needs to know about that specific optical information? So you have, um, as options, you have what was discussed, which is, uh, mantra solution one, which basically involves a read access from an optical controller to, to, uh, to a router. Then there's the mantra solution two, which has all the information being funneled via packet and hierarchical controller to an optical controller. And then there's the, the solution presented just now, which allows read and write access to, to a router from an optical controller. I've, we've added a fourth one, which is also out there in the market, which is actually being used also at lower rates in the past, which is that certain optical parameters very selectively can be set through host independent management, for example, through an in-band control channel, which allows you to, to set a wavelength of a pluggable automatically from a remote. So all of these options exist. And I think all of these options also are, are deployed somewhere. So, um, and they're being discussed in, in many different organizations. As a result of that, if you move to the last page, I'm trying to be very quick, for, so sorry for that. So what we're, we're, we're proposing is that we either combine the two drafts prevent, presented earlier, or perhaps also um, create a framework document, framework document that actually that actually treats with with the overall view of these different approaches. Um, we think that operational considerations need to, to be more, more, uh, more prominent in this, in, in this discussion. Uh, we, just, we started to look at a, a few of those yesterday in the session, which I found very fruitful. Um, and we need a mandatory security section in this. Well, basically, I think that some of the speakers today said that as well. Um, the thing we, we would like to add is that we, we have to liaise to the other organizations also working on these topics. And, um, and we, we, we should liaise with OIF specifically because there's some, some work ongoing there on management of pluggables in routers. 
And specifically, they look at the management of smart pluggables because the functionalities that pluggables have are increasing. And we need to be ready for that in, in what we define here. We can't, we can't do something looking backwards. We have to be ready for, for new functionalities that pluggable interfaces will provide. Thank you. Any, any Thank you, Raoul. Any questions on this? Since we have people still in the room, if someone wants to raise a question, I think we can accommodate one. Otherwise, we will end here. I just wanted to add that uh, you mentioned the problem of who decides, which is true. But to me, the problem is double. We need to identify and agree before considering combining documents. Who decides on who won the states of the within the NEs. And the answer to the, those two questions may be different. And this is where we need to, to, to dive to make sure that we are progressing in a consistent manner. So right. thank you. Thank you for this global overview. Thank you. That's it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.